Sometimes it's kind of funny how humans work, isn't it? You give a man a rock to defend himself against wild animals and instead they strike their neighbor with it to get their hands on their dog. And much in the same way, a lot of players have embraced the nature of this team-based video game in a way that rivals my analogy. Rather than seizing the opportunity to work together and by that increase their chances of winning, it's all about scapegoating. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. The ever so present blame game and throw around of excuses that is the competitive experience in Overwatch. Today, my friends, we'll talk about my personal top 5 worst excuses that make absolutely no sense. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 1. Get off of your hero, your win rate is low. For someone spending as much time as they do just blaming others for their losses, they sure only cherry pick when that should apply. Nobody is saying that one person cannot single-handedly destroy any chance for victory if they desire to do so. But if you are aware of how how team reliant this game is and how easily a single player trolling can make you lose? What makes you think that win rate is a statistic that holds any sort of water in solo queue? Much like the vast majority of other statistics in this video game, it is an absolute meme stat. Much more so if you take it out of context without any other statistics that would add said context. A low win rate alone is not indicative for that player not being good at that hero by any means. They might as well have had bad luck and kept running into people purposefully throwing games. How on earth could they be responsible for that? And even if we do take trolls out of the equation, there's no hero in this game that can single-handedly win every single match. Even if you are doing just fine or even outstanding, it does not guarantee victory. And sure, you could say that it eventually equalizes the more games you play, but do keep in mind that anomalies do appear. And especially for something so volatile like a win rate statistic in solo queue for a team-based game, we should always take it with a grain of salt. Number 2. I'm stuck in my rank because my teams are trash. You know, you're kinda right in that a team is only as strong as their weakest member, but there are a lot of factors to consider in Overwatch. Too often have I seen people in the comment section make it look like in every single game they play, their entire team might as well be AFK while playing against a 6 stack of top 500 smurfs. Listen, if I was to believe your comments and accept that every single game you play has you matched up with teammates who are significantly worse than you, then I would have to assume that this is simply the average skill level of your current elo. That means that chances of you running into enemy teams with a similar skill level are very likely, and if people around your elo are as bad as you make them out to be, and you're as good as you make yourself look, then you should theoretically not have any trouble shit stomping these kids to get into a higher elo. Players underestimate the difference in raw mechanical skill between divisions because most players improve gradually over time rather than being bronze today and GM tomorrow. You don't necessarily notice how you get better. So players often think that the only thing keeping them from ranking up are their teammates when in reality the difference between a gold ranked player and a diamond ranked player is massive. Sure, for a top 500 player they all may look the same and they shit stomp everyone up into high master, but objectively speaking there are massive differences. And whether you want to accept this as fact or not, unless you go out of your way to de-rank, there is no way you're any further than one division away from where your current skill level is. Meaning, if you're in gold and you think you belong to diamond, then getting into platinum should be a piece of cake. Number 3. I don't have to swap, I have gold medals. So how often do we have to go through this until people realize that context is important? As much as the game cares about your statistics to award you XP, it is not a measurement you should give a fuck about when trying to fix a problem in your team comp. Having gold medals does not mean that you're necessarily doing a great job at your current role, and it sure does not validate your pick as a DPS. These statistics are way too easily manipulated to make them a valid point of discussion without seeing the context of the match in which they were achieved. While yes, in your current match everyone on your team was obviously present and they should have the context necessary to make an objective assessment, individual perspective will always throw a wrench into that plan. That simply means that people easily have a different idea of what doing a good job even means. And DPS players in particular are known to tunnel vision a whole lot and by that miss the bigger picture. To make a long story short, what's more important than arbitrary gold medals is that whatever hero you play works well with the team and that you are doing a good job trying to win the match. Not trying to pad your stats, not a high KDR and not even getting play of the game. The only thing that matters is that your ass contributes to a win in any way possible.
Number 4. I'm good, but the game does not acknowledge it. There's a lot to be said about the theory behind how MMR and SR are being calculated, but fact of the matter says that we simply cannot know exactly how they work because the guys who created that algorithm simply will not tell us about it. But honestly, this just comes back down to what I said for number 2, in that if you really are better than your elo suggests, then you will rank up. In the words of the wise man himself, our lord and savior with a banishing blade with which he struck down the beast known as Elo hell. Get good. And with these words of wisdom shed upon us, he returned to whence he came from, trusting that we will finally listen. And lastly, number 5, we only lost because you don't play meta. Really? Like, this is how we're ending this off? A meta argument? I mean, there's something to be said about the trickling effect, with something starting off in the pro scene that then slowly becomes popular on ladder. And yeah, it is true that these things usually transpire first in the high end of top 500 and GM, because these guys are obviously the best that our ladder has to offer, so they're more likely to be able to pull it off with a level of decency that makes it viable. But listen, any hero comp can work, and I mean, any. I've won in Masters before with a 5 DPS comp while I was playing Lucio, I won triple support matches in GM, and I won games with no supports in Diamond as well. Only because you think something works well does not mean that the members of your team are able to pull it off. Everyone is good at different things. You can't just say play meta and then expect these 5 random people on your team to be good at exactly the heroes that you want them to be good at. Rather than trying to force your hero picks down their throats, try to work something out together. Something that suits your individual match with a unique set of teammates opposing a unique set of enemies who are all good at different things. Be creative, and at the end of the day, it does not matter how you win, as long as you do win. But this is me done for the day as so I talk about my personal top 5 worst excuses in Overwatch that make absolutely no sense. If you enjoyed the video, then do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out. Subscribe if you want to see more, and hope to see you all next time. This to me, dude. I can use this. <laughs> you thought I didn't sell out. Oh god, no! I <laughs> I Holy shit, let's play this again, boy. Dude, <laughs> so well to be back.